Hello everybody out there, how are you guys doing? My name is Rob of Rule of Two Review, and welcome back. So it is December 22nd, 2017, which means the year is just about over, and I cannot freaking believe it. We had a brand new Star Wars movie, we had an incredible year in gaming, Nintendo had a new console, so many fantastic games across the board on all consoles, let alone on the Switch, which we are of course going to be focusing on today, no big surprise there. And uh, with the year just about over, and with 2018 right around the corner, I thought it would be a good time to kind of celebrate the awesomeness of Nintendo releasing the Switch and how great their new console is, how much we're all loving it, how much success we're seeing. They're selling these things like crazy, so much good software from Nintendo themselves. Third parties looking stronger than Nintendo has seen in a very, very long time leading into the new year, which is... Oh my gosh, so exciting. It's been way too long since we've been able to see that. So I thought it would be fun too, in celebrating the Nintendo Switch, talk about what I think are the five best games on the console. Now, of course, there are a couple of caveats here that I need to state before I get into the actual list of the five games I'm going to discuss. And the biggest one is that I have not played every game. So that's what I think it really comes down to, guys. And I hope that you guys can remember before you see my list and you get mad at me for not including some of the games that you wanted me to include or disagreeing with pretty much all but two of the games that I think we all know are going to be on this list. You know, I'm just one man. I am one gamer. I am one person. And it's definitely not so much the money aspect of like, oh, I can't afford every game. It's more just, I don't have time, and you guys ha know this and have heard me talk about it. It's hard for any one person to play everything out there, especially this year, and somebody who's also a multi-console owner, and I've been gaming consistently on my PS4, my Xbox One, and definitely my Switch all year. I do not have all the time in the world to play every single game. So, I haven't played every game, I can only talk about the five games out of all of the titles on the Switch that I myself had a chance to play in 2017, which is most of the big ones and a couple of smaller ones, but there's obviously even a couple of big ones and a couple small ones I didn't get to. I also don't do a whole lot of indie games, so I didn't have a whole large pool of indie games to pick from when considering this list as well. So we're mostly looking at some of the bigger retail physical releases of games that I'm going to be including on this list. Also, I want to give one special shout out to one unique game and that is Doom on the Nintendo Switch. And the reason is, I have not played Doom on the Nintendo Switch, but I did play it on the Xbox One last year. I think the game is an absolute freaking stellar masterpiece, and I would say, if I were to have played the Switch version and felt like I could comfortably say I had a handle on the Switch version, there's a very good shot it would have made it into my top five. But since I didn't play the Switch version, I don't think it's fair to include the Xbox One version that I played last year. I have played the game, but not on the console I'm talking about, so I've decided to just not include it, but I did want to give it that special shout out because it truly is that freaking awesome. So with that out of the way, let's get to the goods and talk about my five favorite games, what I think are the five best games on the Nintendo Switch that again, I have played. This was pretty hard. And no surprise, spoiler alert for the end of this list, the top two games I think we all can pretty much agree, there's going to be no surprise when we get to there. But as far as the other three games that I'm discussing here, it was pretty tough to narrow them down and even tougher to place them in an order. So I struggled, like, insanely over this list, you guys. But this is what I settled on, and my number five choice is probably going to be the most controversial, and it shocked me when I realized I wanted to place it here. And it's Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. This game caught all of us off guard, and it definitely caught me off guard. And what's unique for myself when I realized that this was a game that I loved so much and wanted to include on this list is that it's a game that, for one, I didn't believe in forever. I mean, the rumors existed for six months, and there are other people, well-known YouTubers and people in the community who will tell you, yeah, Rob was pretty much adamant he didn't believe in it, and I made videos about it. I thought the game was a total bogus hoax. I thought it was nothing. It was vaporware. And of course, we all know what happened. It turned out to be real, there were leaks, and then it was revealed at E3, and it was this crazy moment, and the game turned out to look really great, and then we had the game, and it was great. And for me, when the game came out, the first probably week or two, I was like, yeah, this is actually pretty good, I'm enjoying this, but it didn't hook me, and I actually fell off the wagon for a little bit, and I kind of got distracted by whatever else came out pretty soon after, I don't even remember now. Um, and for about a month or so, I actually didn't play the game, I totally forgot about it, but then... I kind of had a wild hair up my butt and I was like, hey, let me turn on Mario Plus Rabbids again because I want to just try to get back into it and see if it's better than I remember. 
you know, it, I, I knew it was good, but is it as good as I wanted it to be? And oh my goodness, once I did that, I got so re-addicted to that game. And everything about its presentation, its gameplay, the strategy behind the combat, and, and the music, the visuals, the weirdness of the story, and how insane it is that Mario and the Rayman Rabbids world worked so well because of the amount of care and effort that Ubisoft and Nintendo put into it, it blew me away. And I got so addicted to doing the battles once I really got comfortable and found a formula that worked for me. And I started to really take my time in crafting and upgrading the skill trees in a way that felt comfortable for me. I was hooked, you guys. I was so hooked. And so, I haven't had a chance to beat the game because, again, time. I just, I work too much. My band keeps me busy. Other games keep me busy. I just, that's just the way it is. But I've put a lot of time into it for what I have available to game with. And it's freaking awesome. It's so incredible. So, a huge surprise. And I'm very happy to report... The game is better than I thought, and surprisingly, it's my fifth favorite game on the Nintendo Switch so far. Coming in at number four is another game that might be a little bit controversial, but I stand by it 100%, and that is Skyrim. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim on the Nintendo Switch. Could you say it's a cheat because it's an older game that released years ago before it even released on the Switch? Sure, maybe you could do that, and if you want to look at it that way, that's fine, but this is my list on my channel, and I'm just considering games that exist and are playable and purchasable for the Nintendo Switch, and that does include Skyrim. It was a huge release, a lot of press, positive reviews, and you know what? Skyrim is just one of my favorite games of all time, period. I said earlier in the video, if Doom had released this year, I probably would have also considered Doom here, even though it's an older game from last year. So Skyrim fits the same boat, and you know what? I put like almost 200 hours into this game in 2011 when it came out, and I bought it for my PC. Blew me away. It is, absolutely. Whether it's the 2011 version or the 2017 Switch version, whatever, it's one of the best games I've ever played. It's a, it's a monumental achievement, and to have it available on the Switch, in portable, with some interesting motion controls and the Joy-Cons, very good-looking game, runs extremely well, it is a massive game, and... To my biggest surprise, this is the first time playing it on the Switch this year is the first time I've played Skyrim in probably four years, three or four years. And my biggest surprise is, I think, how well the game held up. One of the things I was a little bit nervous about going into the release on the Switch was like, ah oh man, I love Skyrim, but it's like a really old game and it's probably going to feel really outdated. I mean, I've already, I've played Fallout 4 since Skyrim came out, so how good will this game still be? And it's still great. I mean, running around the world of Skyrim and Tamriel and and all of the presentation. I just love the music, the way the music ebbs and flows with as you as you move through the world. And it's still beautiful. Even though you can tell it's dated, it's still gorgeous. And it's a ton of fun. And let me get lost in that world and find caves to explore through and enemies to fight. And I love the whole everything with the Dragonborn storyline. It's still interesting to me after all these years. So... What can I say, man? I'm a sucker, and six years later, it's still one of the best games and my fourth favorite on the Switch. So coming in at number three, we're getting into a little bit more familiar and predictable territory, and that's totally fine. We as Nintendo fans know the things that we like to see from Nintendo. And so for myself, my third favorite game on the Switch in 2017 is Splatoon 2, which is really great, and I'm so happy to report that, because the first Splatoon, I do very much enjoy, and I did put a fair amount of time into that game, however, it's another one that didn't grab me like it grabbed a lot of other people, and it was a little bit repetitive, and I didn't like the map rotation, which to be fair does still exist in a way in Splatoon 2, and I just really, I didn't like the leveling up and the upgrading system, it just moved far too slow for me, and, I don't know, it just didn't grab me the same way like a Mario Kart did the year before. I, that's just the way it is. But Splatoon 2, I was weirdly very excited for it. I had a chance to play it when I went to the Switch preview event in New York earlier this year, and that's when I kind of realized, man, this is pretty special. Like, it's the same game, and it's like the same feel and the same look, only slightly better, and it's like the same, it's the same everything. But something about it just seemed more exciting. Maybe it was just the buzz of the Switch in my hand for the first time ever and a new Nintendo console coming out so soon. But by the time the game finally released, man, I gotta tell you, it's a better game. It's just a much better game than the first game. And it's not just because it looks a little bit better. I just find everything about the delivery of the game, the gameplay, the online network, and playing with people. There's far more modes. I think the Salmon Run is actually pretty cool, even though I don't like how they limit when you can play it. The story mode and campaign is definitely better than it was in the first game, which was something I was very much looking forward to. 
And I don't know what to say. It's just a game that just... I put a lot more time into, you know? And again, I don't have so much time to put 50, 60, 70, 100 hours into every game. I just don't have that time. But for me, the amount of time I can put into video games nowadays, Splatoon 2 really hooked me. That first month, I couldn't believe how often I wanted to keep turning this game on and it just kept pulling me back and pulling me back. And it's something that I was thinking maybe wouldn't happen with Splatoon 2. It didn't so much happen with Splatoon 1. What if it doesn't happen with the sequel? But it did. It's a great game. The online is fantastic. There's the voice chat and the app thing is kind of tied into Splatoon 2, which we know is dumb, but whatever. Let's not pay attention to that. As far as just a game, as far as a sequel, and, you know, a continuation of a Nintendo first-party IP and one of the newer ones we've gotten from them, I love the game, man. More than I expected. So, for me, my third favorite game on the Nintendo Switch is Splatoon 2. And so here we are with the top two games, and like I said before, spoiler alert, no surprises here. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you guys and pretend like, ooh, what's number two and one going to be? I bet you can't predict. I've got these wacky answers that's going to surprise everybody. That's not what's happening here. We all know what the two best games on the Nintendo Switch are. And so, because of that, I will tell you that my second favorite game, number two on my list for the top five games on the Nintendo Switch, is Super Mario Odyssey because, duh, it's Mario, it's Odyssey, which is so incredible. It's exactly what we've been waiting for for so long. And, you know, I discussed Mario Odyssey a lot when it came out. Everyone's discussed it. It's a fantastic game. And one of, one of the things that really, really just made me so joyfully happy when playing this game and something that I was so happy to see them bring back into this game and execute properly are the motion controls. And I know a lot of people want to groan with motion controls and Nintendo and the Wii remotes and the Joy-Cons and the blah, blah, blah. And people just hate that stuff. And if that's you, then fine. That's totally cool. For me, I like good solid motion controls, Nintendo motion controls, when done properly and when it enhances the game experience. And in typical Nintendo fashion, what they did with Mario Odyssey, at least in my opinion, was you can tell they very much built the cappy controls and the gameplay experience and the traversal through all the different worlds and kingdoms in, in Mario Odyssey, they built them around the fact that they have Joy-Cons, motion control Joy-Cons, and obviously Nintendo knew that they could do something here, and with the cappy mechanic of you're throwing your cap, and you're throwing it down, and you're throwing it up, and you're throwing it around, they were like, these Joy-Cons are perfect, so let's just build our game this way, and so they don't feel cheap or gimmicky or tacked on, they feel organic and contextual, and natural to what the Mario Odyssey experience is supposed to be, and it's probably my favorite part of the game. Beyond that, it's the huge worlds and the kingdoms. I really liked what they did with the kingdom aspect here, and it's like taking the skeleton of what the Mario 64 formula first introduced with a hub world of the Mushroom Kingdom castle and the paintings to jump in and out, which will always be the best. I don't care what anyone says, that will always be the best way to do it. But they, they, they evolved that, and they gave us these huge kingdoms to go and explore. And, like, the worlds, they're pretty big. They're maybe not as big as some people would want. We're not talking, like, Skyrim levels big, but they're big for Mario levels and areas to explore. And they get bigger and bigger, and you go back and find new secrets. And then let's talk about the end game, the fact that it has an incredible final boss battle, which, to me... Just shot this this game through the stratosphere when I beat it. I mean, I was like so into the game, but then I did that final battle, and I was like, oh my god, this is even better than I could have thought. And then they're still not done surprising you, because then they introduce a whole new mind-blowing extra kingdom as soon as that's done, and then you have reasons to explore every other kingdom you've already been to, even like the dumb ones, like the Cloud Kingdom, or the one that you start in, the uh, whatever the Hat Kingdom is, like that first one. It's like, what? There's so much to do. There's a thousand freaking moons in this game. It's so crazy. And the costumes and the outfits and the different currencies that are unique to the kingdom. And the perfect, excellent, always, always 100% amazing controls that Nintendo puts into their platformers and their Mario games. What can you say? The game is incredible. It's a masterpiece. It is not my favorite 3D Mario. To me, that crown is still held by... Um, Mario 64, and the first Super Mario Galaxy, and I might even say Galaxy 2 is probably still a better game, but whatever, it's not about comparison. It's about the here and now. Galaxy is that game. It is as good as the reviews and the people and the fanboys will tell you, and so it is my second favorite game on the Switch. And that brings us to number one, and obviously no shocks or surprises here. It is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And I don't really know what more could be said about Zelda that hasn't been said, either from myself or for from you guys, 
from the internet, from other YouTubers, from video game reviews, from Game of the Year awards. It even recently just won at the Game Awards Game of the Year. And it's, it's everything it's been said and more. I mean, it really is amazing. When the game first came out, in the first couple of days, I made one of my first videos I made actually after the Switch launched was about how Zelda was giving me the Ocarina of Time feeling. That was like the what I named the video. And it was because I realized in that first couple of days, every time I turned this game on and played it for hours on end, and I kept experiencing the world and finding new areas and new weapons and locations and new abilities with the Sheikah Slate and new shrines to explore and just all these different secrets and amazing things that this game kept throwing at you especially in that first like 15 or 20 hours you're playing and every other second you're finding and doing something brand new and the music was just just sucking me in and the amazing visuals and the art direction and the and the weather and the setting of the sun and the rising of the sun I mean all these dumb things Every time that happened, I was just so blown away. And I was giddy like a little kid playing video games for the first time. And it reminded me of how the Ocarina of Time blew my mind in a way that no game before it had ever done. And I was 18, 17 going on 18 when the Ocarina of Time came out. So I wasn't even a little kid. I was like a, a teenager, like coming up on adulthood. I had a girlfriend at that time. Like I wasn't a kid. And it's still, even Ocarina of Time made me feel like a little kid. I was so impressed and blown away. And this is probably Breath of the Wild for the first time was the closest to that feeling I think any game had given me since. And that's probably why that game is so special to me. And the fact that there was so much to do and it lasted me two months and I put over 150 hours or whatever into the game. And we can still go back and play more. I haven't even started the DLC. I mean, there's still more to do. And it's just everything a Zelda game should be and more. There's one or two things that I don't love. Like, I've been very critical of how they implemented the weapon breaking system, and I stand by that. And as I said in a video recently, I do miss a few things like having a companion and also some of the older dungeon structure. But I can step away from those couple of little minor things and see the amazing masterpiece 10 out of 10 perfect game in every other respect. I still loved the shrines. I thought that was an amazing way to change up the formula, especially when you include so many, 120 shrines. There's a lot of puzzle solving to get into, not to mention four huge divine beasts as well. And I loved the inventory system and I loved just everything else. And I love the, the horses and the horse camps the stables and all of these different things. The final battle was incredible. I wanted a little bit more out of Ganon as a character, but the battle itself was amazing. I mean, I could just gush forever. It is the game that people tell you it is. Just like with Mario, Breath of the Wild is probably the second, third, fourth, top three or four game I've ever played. It is a perfect game. I love it to death. And without question, it is the number one game on the Nintendo Switch. So there you have it, my five favorite games, the top five games on the Nintendo Switch, according to me and of the games that I have played. Of course, I could do probably like, you know, 15 honorable mentions for all these different games that are really fantastic. ARMS is really good, Sonic Mania is really good, like whatever, Mario Kart, of course, is amazing. All these games, but I'm not gonna do that. I just wanted to really focus on these five games and that little special shout out to Doom, I think was important as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's it. That's my top five list of Nintendo Switch games coming up on the new year. 2018 is right around the corner. Time to get excited for more new stuff. A lot of us expect a Nintendo Direct in January. I think that is very possible. I mean, as soon as January 1st hits, we're going to start counting down to E3 again, as crazy as that may sound. So we got a lot of stuff to be excited for, man. We're going to get some great surprises. We know some great Nintendo franchises are going to come. Hopefully some other third-party games will become surprising as well. So I want to hear you guys talk about the Switch in 2017, your favorite games on the console. What do you expect next year? What do you think of the five games that I talked about today? All of these different fun things. That is going to be it for me today. Thanks, of course, as always, for tuning in. This is Rob of Rule 2 Review, and I will catch you next time on another video.